Well, over the summer, NBA players used their popularity and their power in unimaginable ways, and most of it happened off the court. Well, the NBA playoffs caused a pause for three days as teams refused to play after a police officer shot Jacob Blake in Wisconsin. Now, that same summer, members of the Atlanta Hawks, along with head coach Lloyd Pierce, they walked with protesters in Atlanta after the deaths of George Floyd and Rayshard Brooks. CBS 46 sports reporter Emily Gangyong in studio tonight. And Emily, once again, the Hawks, along with the rest of the NBA, reacted as they, along with the world, saw those rioters invade the U.S. Capitol building. Yeah, Rick, Tracy, as the country, the world really, you know, we were digesting what happened at the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday. NBA teams and players, coaches across the nation were doing the exact same thing. There were 11 games last night, and teams from coast to coast reacted to the news by showing unity, much like they did this summer during the Black Lives Matter protests. Off the opening tip, the teams both take a knee. The Milwaukee Bucks and Detroit Pistons took a knee to start their game. Former Hawks head coach, you see him right there, Mike Budenholzer and his staff joined the LA Clippers and Golden State Warriors doing the same. Teams across the league showing unity after Trump supporters attacked the U.S. Capitol. Hawks coach Lloyd Pierce can't help but think how different yesterday would have looked if there were black rioters. The reason why there, there isn't um, shootings and, and brutality and looting and things of that nature and it's and people are just walking around the Capitol building as if it's nothing and there's people sitting in Nancy Pelosi's office as if it's nothing. We all understand that that would have been guns ablaze and fires ablaze right now if there were black people protesting. Heaven forbid a 12 year old black boy carry a toy gun in a park or a 15 year old black boy walk home from a store with a bag of Skittles. Um, or a young black male run through the neighborhood on a jog. A blatant, blatant display of the inequity um, in our country. And we heard this from so many coaches and players, how yesterday's attack shows a double standard. There are five NBA games tonight, and we'll definitely stay on top of it and see how these teams tonight continue to show unity. With the Atlanta Falcons, they're still on the hunt for a new head coach. Earlier today, Panthers offensive coordinator Joe Brady interviewed for the job virtually. This past season, Carolina's offense ranked 21st overall in total yards per game. Brady, who's only 31 years old, is best known for being the passing coordinator at LSU. And quarterback Joe Burrow led the team to a national championship just last season. He also won the Heisman Trophy Award. Brady is the fourth coach interviewed by the Falcons. So far, they've met with current Interim head coach Raheem Morris, Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy, and the 49ers defensive coordinator. The Falcons are also on the market for a new general manager, as I'm sure you know. Wednesday, they interviewed Terry Fontenot, the Saints vice president and assistant general manager of pro personnel. You know, he got his foot in the door as a marketing intern with the Saints. The Falcons are taking a lot of interviews with their divisional rivals. I'm not liking it, Tracy, but hey, if they're good enough to take the job, I'm all in for it. Well, we appreciate that you are in for it. Emily, thank you. We'll see you a little bit later. Still